Hi everyone, hope you're well. Today's video will be on warfarin versus novel oral anticoagulants, also known as NOAX. Both are oral anticoagulants. Warfarin is a vitamin K antagonist and has been used for the past 60 years. NOAX are new and have came into effect over the past few years. Some examples of NOAX are rivaroxaban, which is a factor 10A inhibitor, and dibigatran, which is a thrombin inhibitor. Now that we know about the drugs, let's get into the video. Warfarin requires regular INR monitoring. INR stands for International Normalised Ratio. It is a blood test that checks how long it takes for blood to clot. The higher the INR, the longer it will take for the blood to clot, and the higher the risk of bleeding. Regular INR monitoring means that the patients will have frequent blood test appointments, which can be a hassle for the patients, especially the elderly. In contrast, NOACs require no INR monitoring, so this is an advantage of them. Warfarin has many drug interactions because it is metabolized by cytochrome P450, meaning it will interact with all the enzyme inducers and enzyme inhibitor drugs. Compared to warfarin, NOACs have less drug interactions. Warfarin also has food interactions, for example, with cranberry juice, grapefruit juice and alcohol. NOAX, however, don't have these food interactions, so it increases the compliance of patients taking them. As you know, anticoagulants have a risk of bleeding. If bleeding does occur from a result of warfarin, there is an antidote available for this to reverse the effects of the bleeding. The antidote for warfarin is vitamin K. However, if bleeding occurs in NOAX, there is currently no antidote for this. This causes a big problem in the use of NOAX. Warfarin has variable dosing, so the dosing changes according to each patient. For example, there will be different dosing for a patient if they have renal failure. Compared to this, NOAX have a fixed dosing which makes it easier to prescribe for each patient. Warfarin has a longer half-life. This means that they act for longer periods of time compared to NOAX. As NOAX have a shorter half-life, they act for a much shorter period of time, so if you miss a dose, you're not protected. Warfarin has a slow onset of action. It takes 48 to 72 hours for the effects to take place. Compared to this, NOAX has a rapid onset of action, taking only 1.5 to 3 hours for effects to take place. People are not sure of the long-term safety of NOAX since they have only been around for a few years. For this reason, doctors may be less familiar with NOAX as they have been prescribing warfarin for decades compared with only a few years for NOAX. Another point I forgot to mention is that warfarin is much cheaper compared to NOAX since they are new. However, with time, NOAX will reduce in price and more doctors will be comfortable in prescribing them. I hope you guys learnt from this video and found it useful. If you have any suggestions for videos, let me know in the comments. If I have made any mistakes, please let me know. And don't forget to give my video a like and subscribe if you found it useful. See you in the next video.